All right, what is up, everybody? We have arrived at the final character of the Season 3 of DLC. Uh, Falcon Rom is a Muay Thai kickboxer, but ends up being pretty much a completely different character from either Bruce or Josie, which we've kind of got used to. And a lot of his style is based on feints and cancel, his ability to stop one move and turn it into another move. It works similar to a lot of characters that have a built-in stance, or they'll just do like a one-two punch into a stance, and it has discrete options from there. Or some characters will have a string that's got the third hit as a low or a mid built-in mix-up to it. This isn't quite like either of those, but functionally is pretty similar. So in this video, we will talk about how this mechanic works for this character, his overall move set, and what it means for his general play style. And then we'll cover other topics like specific move properties, what he does for wall bounce, his power crush, his screw attacks, and stuff like that. At 10 frames, you have 1-4. Nice little high, high string that causes the spin backwards. And wall splats. Nothing knocked down out in the open, but wall splats. That's pretty good overall. If you want to knock down out in the open, at 12 frames, you have forward 2-1. This move is also high, high, but it causes a knockdown. They're able to tech roll. They can get out of that, that squat, but if they fail to do so, you can hit them for free with forward, forward, 1 plus 2. You should have plenty of time to see. Hope they didn't tech roll and hit them with that. So that could potentially be a huge amount of damage. 50. That could be 50 damage off of a 12 frame punish if they happen to not tech roll, which they will, but it's a nice bonus if they don't. Uh, 13 frames, he has down forward one and its options. The only reason you do this is if you needed a mid or you wanted to just transition into an offensive situation because down forward one has several different extensions. There's a lot of things you can do off of it. That'd be the only reason to do so because forward two one is much better at 12 frames. However, at 14 really opens it up with back one. This is a mid that causes that knockdown, and unlike forward 2-1, you cannot tech roll this knockdown. Slightly different animation, and forward forward 2-1 is always guaranteed. 49 damage off of your 14 frame punish. That's really good. Be better if I could do it on the D-pad reliably. So, can't ignore that. That's one of the better 14 frame punishes I've seen. A huge amount of damage and your knockdown, that's really good. At 15, down forward 2-3 is your basic launcher. Causes a crumple stun, but all your bread and butter combos work. Nothing different about it. You're really only going to use this as a block punisher. You're not going to throw it out in the open, so you don't have to worry about it being mid-high. He does have, you know, options to back it up if you needed to, but pretty much consider this block punishment only. Uh, it's limited in its range. Out here at the twos, it can whiff two and a half. So you do a little bit more range out of your down forward four kick. This down forward four three is 16 frames and has a little bit more range. So if you fear push back a little bit and you don't want to whiff, you can go for this and get your damage otherwise. Uh, the nice thing about this is a hit confirmable. So if you happen to not get the punish or whatever, you don't have to let the three fly or you can change it into a different kick. It turns mid and you plus on block. That's a very interesting trick, and we'll talk about that more later for sure. So your 16 frame with a little bit of range is down forward 4-3. Uh, the last Punisher to talk about is at 18 frames is back forward 4. This little number has a cool cinematic, makes a neat sound effect. It just feels really good to hit people with it. This is for if you block something really big, or if you're just outside of whiff punishing range, this is the one you want to go for if you have the extra bit of time. Keep in mind it's a high, so something that recovers crouching you might have to watch out for. But otherwise, this is one of the cooler launchers to look out for. Uh, crouching punishment, nothing remarkable, but they all get the job done really well. 11 frames is a while standing four, just like anyone else. 13 frames, he has while standing 1-2, which is kind of like Laws. It's a mid-high that knocks you down. This is very hit confirmable. You have all day to see that one and then press 2. She is blocking. I mean, I'll show you the... She's on the guard all. That's, that's I'm not like, you know, phoning it in. You have all day to confirm that hit. So no fears about missing that punish. You're good on that. It's a good amount of damage and a knockdown. 13. And then at 15, he has Wall Standing 3, which is a conventional launcher, staple combos. So that's that's pretty much it. I think that's a really good set. This character does not have the evasive tools to get away from things, so he has to make the blocks. He's got a pretty good punishment set to deal with. And I think overall, the set is definitely above average. 
thanks mainly to that back one. That's the one that really pushes it over the top. So the first major topic to cover is this fate cancel mechanic that he has. Uh, rather than a conventional stance or built-in string mix-ups, he's got somewhere that's halfway in between. A lot of characters might have a third hit string where it's, you know, a built-in mix-up. This character has something a little bit different where he has strings that he can change how they end. Um, these split into three major groups for the most part, depending on which kick it is that has the cancel, there's a couple different options for each kick. So the first one is this 4-3 kick, a double high spin kick, looks a lot like Laws again, like his Shaolin spin kicks. Uh, this string appears in several combinations, there's 1-2-4-3, there's 2-4-3, there's 4-3 by itself, and there's a low, down 3-4-3. Three, these, these last two hits are exactly the same. They're the same kick in all these combinations. So the nice advantage is the timing at which they come out. You're not always going to be doing 4-3 by itself. You can do 2-4-3, which really will mess your through opponent's rhythm once they try to start anticipating what you're doing. So when you do these kicks, just doing 4-3 is the basic kick. But you have three options out of this. The first one is 1. So all you do is just do 4-3-1, basically. During the animation of the 3, it cancels the kick, and then out comes the 1. This is a high elbow strike that is a natural launcher, but it is not a homing move. It's a screw attack in combos, but it is not homing. This will lose to sidestepping to your right. Uh, the other option is a mid out of four. You do four, three, four, and it cancels into a mid. This will wall splat, but will not combo out in the open. Out in the open, however, you can hold the four and that turns into a launcher that blasts them up into the air. Notice there's a very long window of time, so people are probably not going to get hit by that. Uh, this mid will also lose to sidestepping to your right. So you got to think, okay, well, sidestepping right beats all of these things. There's an answer and a counter answer for everything, and we'll cover more of that later. Uh, the final option out of this stance is his rage drive. Let me show it to you once just to see what it is, and we'll cover this more in depth later on. So his Rage Drive is a low launcher. You notice it's low high and it will jail you into it. Uh, this is just done by three plus four. You do four three and then three plus four cancels that hit. This will hit you tracking when you're sidewalking right. So that kind of takes that out of the equation. But like I said, we'll cover more of the, the fundamentals of how this works later. Needless to say, there are two options out of this cancel and the Rage Drive is your third. And that's only out of this left kick. This left kick cancels into those three things, and that's it. So the next major set is right knee strikes, like this one. This is 3-4. There is also forward 3-2-4, like that, same knee, and while standing 2-4, like that. Those all end in the same strike. They might be a little bit different, and they get there in different timing, which is important, but that's the same knee strike. So this cancels into a 3. 3-4-3 three, three turns into that mid sidekick, which you can also hold, and it becomes a launcher out in the open. And you can cancel this into a 4, which is a little bit different than the other ones. He doesn't completely cancel his kick, he just changes it. So it turns this mid knee strike into a high screw attack natural launcher. If that hits them, that causes a combo and is also plus six on block. So that's kind of a really dangerous tool. The only problem with it being is a high, but it tracks you sidewalking, and a character that might have some issues with sidewalking, this handles that, plus on block, really, really interesting tool to have. That's the one you want to kind of rely on. You'd like to get this as often as possible, right? You want to catch people stepping with something like that. That works really well. You can also access Rage Drive out of this dance, same way, three plus four, you just press that to cancel your third hit. One thing that's worth mentioning about both of these options where you can charge up, whether it's 3-4 you charge up that 3, or 4-3-4 four, four, and you charge up that. If the character, if your opponent blocks, this has an interesting reaction. It looks like it's actually hitting them, but it's not. It's just a huge amount of block stun. It says plus 14, you don't get to hit them for free or anything. It's just a giant block stun. They both do that. 
The funny thing is, is if you're at the wall, that will wall splat you. You cannot block that and you will get splatted by just standing there. It turns into an unblockable wall splat. Out in the open you can block, but when you're near the wall, that becomes massively dangerous because you can't just stand there and ride out the storm any longer. Same applies to the knee. That will splat you into the wall. <laughs> so you have to be super careful about that when your back is to the wall. Uh, the third major set of fate cancels comes out of the spinning right kick, which is down forward one, four, and forward forward four. Those are both the same kick with the same options. Uh, the first option, you cancel with a one, which is that overhead elbow. On counter hit, that will launch your opponent if they press the wrong button. And the other option is three, two. It's a low mid knockdown. It's basically, it follows the, the criteria of a hell sweep, and I'm probably going to call it that. It's a low mid that knocks him down and is very punishable on either side. Looks like that. The interesting thing is that three kick by itself is also a counter hit launcher. The one counter hit launches that, and so does the three. So both of them are counter hit launchers. Uh, the elbow will definitely lose to sidestepping to your right. The sweep will hit you kind of to the right a little bit. It's a little trickier. You can step it, but not reliably. So that's one thing that's been common with most of these is they do lose to sidewalking. Sidewalking beats almost all of these, except for that one homing attack. And the other thing to consider is these are not fast. Like characters that have a stance, like Leo or Josie, can often trap you into it. When you block the attack that leads into stance, they have a huge frame advantage, and so you have a hard time challenging what they do next. In Falker Mom's case, that is not true. For example, the 4-3-1 one cancel into that elbow, if they block the four, they have 17 frames to beat you out. This is not fast by any means. That window is 17 frames, and even the other option, if you do uh, 4 3 1 and 4 3 4, they're 17 and 18 frames. You have all the time in the world to beat those out. So keep that in mind as well. You can stuff this, but again, there's a counter and an answer to everything. And we'll talk about those in just a little bit as well. And all the stances share the same thing. The, the right knee cancels are the same. That's a 17 frame gap. That's a 15 frame gap. And especially on the spin kicks, forward, forward, four. That's a huge gap. That's 22 frames. And the gap in here is more than 22. I don't even know how much. You have all the time in the world to beat it. But you have to be aware of the fact that it's coming in order to beat it. You have to be able to see his spin and then react to it correctly, which kind of cuts in some of your time. If you were a magic computer, obviously you could do it in 22 frames, but a human's going to have a hard time getting used to that, especially when they vary up the timing with which it comes at you, which is why you have 1, 2, 4, 3, 4, 3 by itself, etc., etc. You're not going to get used to that rhythm. One thing that is worth noting, though, is these can be more dangerous they're definitely more dangerous if you're not paying as close attention. This character's range can be really, really deceptive. If you think I'm standing out here, you should be fine. This character can't hurt me. There's no problems here. Well, that reaches you. That big sweeping homing kick reaches you. Oh, okay. That's something to consider. Well, it's mid. It's actually unsafe. I think this is minus 13. So I'll just stay out here and I'll punish that. But interesting things start happening with these cancels. When he does that, he can hit you low at this distance with that hell sweep and the knockdown. So you feel like the world is just fine out here and then all of a sudden here comes this guy with that low that hits you from a mile and a half away. So that's an interesting caveat to this character is your sense of spacing is very, very different. He can be much more dangerous far away as well as his ability to stay in close in range of all these knees. These are really tight fitting moves. And he's super dangerous at this part. He's also very dangerous out here. So that's another thing that kind of keeps you on your toes mentally, is you can't let your guard down when you're all the way out here. You still have to consider mix-ups that might be coming at you. Uh, the last cancels to talk about aren't as structured as these other ones. They're just kind of single hits. Uh, one of them is down forward one, two. We saw how down forward one, four cancels into two options. Down forward one, two can also cancel itself into a one down forward one two one basically that's all it does it's not super dangerous it's just to mess with your timing 
It puts a little bit of a gap in there and it causes a knockdown. The interesting thing though is all most of these stances have good counter hit properties or natural launchers. Uh, in this case, if you if you see an opponent that's willing to jab a lot, they want to try to break up your pressure, you know, you're poking and doing this or whatever, and they jab at the wrong situation, down forward 1-2 has a little counter hit built into it as well. And you get to follow up that way. So if they're expecting a gap like this, like, oh, he's going to do the faint thing, and I'm just going to jab him out of it, you get a counter hit if you let that attack go. So again, everything has a, a backup strategy built into it. Down forward 1-2-1, one, has a little bit of a timing thing to it. And we mentioned previously in the punishment section, down forward 4-3 at 16 frames is hit confirmable. So you don't have to worry about this getting ducked. You can confirm that three fairly easily. But if you do throw it out and you see it get blocked, you just double tap the three and it turns into that. Turns into a mid that's now plus one on block. So that's like a nice, interesting little tool that you get your hit, you just let it go with your damage. And if you see it get blocked, you just double tap and you maintain your turn. You get plus one and get to attack them again. So that's also very interesting. That's just a single one-off cancel. There's not other options out of there. So you're probably going to end up seeing this a lot out of fucking on players. That's really good. You see the hit, boom. If you get the block, oh, guess what? It's still my turn because of that. So that works out really well. So that covers all of the mix-ups Falcon Rum has due to his ability to cancel one attack into another at the end of a string. And we saw with a lot of these cases, sidestepping to your right beats a lot of them, as well as just hitting them out. Some of those had a 20 frame gap, which you could easily hop kick. So you ask yourself, why doesn't that just beat everything? Because for each one of those stances, he's got some built-in measures to keep you from doing such a thing. Uh, for example, 4-3-4. Four, I used a lot when I was just getting warmed up with this character because this four is also a magic four. This lets you kind of get your combo and you know protect yourself. But that's still a long gap. That's a 17 frame gap. So they see me spinning around, they can throw out a jab or their own magic four or whatever it is and stop me, right? So if I sense that the opponent is gonna start doing that, I can just do four three. I don't have to cancel. I can just do the string as it is. That'll work just fine. You wouldn't be able to sidewalk in between these. That's gonna jail you into it. Uh, and this, in the case of all these three strings, this remember it's the same string that appears three times, okay. one, two, four, three, etc. All of them have a four, four option. One, two, four, four. That's a low. What this does is completely eat up someone that tries to challenge you. Instead of canceling into this and they try to do a jab or a magic four or whatever, if I did this instead, that will counter hit them. And those counter hits look like that. 41 damage is a lot. That's going to teach you a pretty harsh lesson about trying to challenge more than once. No, you can do this move by itself, down four, and you do not get that effect on counter hit. That counter hit animation and follow up damage is there only as a deterrent for you to challenge these stances. All the three kicks, the four three kicks, have a four four option, which will counter hit you, or just four three. That's enough to, to mess with your rhythm. Two four three, four three, cancel, three four, cancel, you know what I mean? And then here's a low. Those are what it's meant to really back itself up. There's a plenty of built-in options, but again, every mix-up has a downside. If the character, if your opponent is is got a good idea what you're gonna do, they can beat it. If you can tell that they're a person who likes to counter you with jabs, then you start throwing this out to stop them from doing that. Then next time you go for a cancel. Eventually someone's gonna guess right against you. You know what I mean? It happens every time. So that's why mix-ups aren't as favorable a thing in this game, because there is always a risk to it. But if they never guess right, it's gonna like make, it look, make it look easy for you. So you have to use these variable timings and the options to keep them from ever getting out in front of you. Keep them guessing, and they'll never be able to anticipate what you do, and they'll probably guess wrong more often than not. So the four three strings have the string itself, and there's a low option that counter hits you to keep you from doing that. Uh, the three four, the knee strikes, these also have a few options too. Three, four by itself would hit. And on counter hit, whoops, excuse me. Counter hit will knock you down or wall splat you. Damn it, I keep pressing, I keep mashing that button out. There it is. The four by itself will knock you down onto the ground and as well as catching the whole, th whole string on counter hit, by the way. So if you do get happy about pressing buttons against this, you could just do three, four, boom. 
Uh, they can tech roll that knockdown as well. Damn it. I keep doing it. I can't make myself stop mashing that attack. There it is. If they don't tech roll that, you get that free follow-up again, just like you did with forward 2-1. So if they're, if they're not paying super close attention, you have them frazzled and they don't, free damage for you. But 3-4 will cause that knockdown, so that's enough of a deterrent right away to stop them from trying to challenge this. That's what the character is made of. 3-4 does that, so does forward 3-2-4. They don't want to get hit by these things. And while standing 2-4 also kind of hurts. So you can always just let the string go, you don't have to cancel. You don't need to cancel that every time, you can just do it. And that will completely stop the opponent's buttons from trying to beat you out of it. Uh, the other three forward three two four is, is an interesting one as well. This has some extra stuff going on to it besides ending with that knee. There's also a forward three two one, which is just there to mess with that timing again. Perfectly safe. It's a high attack because the mids, these mid knee kicks are all minus twelve. So you don't want to necessarily stop with those. If that's not your preferred option. That's your backup. If they're starting to hit buttons, this is how you counter those buttons. But you don't want to go for that because it is unsafe. So you do have forward three, two, one to cover that, just to, to again check them from pressing buttons against you, mess with their timing, etc. Uh, this move also, if it lands as a counter hit, gets a combo. So that's another interesting feature too. Not only are they worried about the what comes at the end of it, you can use this to try to fish for counter hits. It's actually fairly fast. But these all have a way to, to keep themselves honest. And we talked about sidewalking right beats most of these options. A lot of these have access to his rage drive, which is a low that tracks, and that shuts all of that down too. So once rage activates, it's a whole different ball game. They're all completely honest mix-ups. But again, if you guess right, you'll have a much easier time. So in addition to the extra strings he has that keep the opponent from falling into one reliable counter strategy, he's got a couple of other interesting tools that really just get a lot of mileage out of. Uh, we talked about how the one-two jab sequence is really good at messing with their timing. You can't tell when the kicks are coming if he starts it a different way. In addition to one-two, he also has one-one, and you can't forget about one-four. One-four, when you punish ten frames and gets wall splats, never forget that exists. You know, that's worth using all the time. That's so rarely going to get ducked, even on block, because one-one exists. They don't want to get hit by one-one all day. It doesn't knock you down unless they get counter hit and you get that free follow up as well. So that also exists in the back of your mind. If they start getting antsy with buttons, you know, you can switch out to different jab strategies, use your 10 frame against them, use your 10 frame counter hit bait. That's an interesting move to have in your belt too. Uh, as far as some other moves that aren't just, you know, mix up poking tools, he's got an excellent wall bounce move in the form of forward one plus two. It looks exactly like Street Fighter's Balrog doing his charge up dash punch. It's the exact same animation. This is 20 frames, 21, which is reasonably fast, also reasonably slow. It doesn't track, but it's got phenomenal range. He's hitting you from half a world away with this thing, like three plus. And it's safe on block and it's mid. So that's a really good wall bounce. Some characters have better ones, some characters have worse. This one is pretty good. Safe mid wall bounce is an excellent tool to have. Any safe mid launcher is really good, which brings us to up forward one. This move isn't as fast. This is 28 frames, which I think is going to be on the border of players being able to react to this. People might start seeing this jump and be able to step it really quick. It's hard to say, but this is a safe mid launcher no matter what. You can't scoff at that. Those are really useful. In addition to the fact that it jumps, this is one of the few things he has that can beat lows. Like I said, this character does not have evasion. He does not go around you. He's too much of a giant hulk to do things like that. So any move that does beat out lows is worth recognizing. So for that measure, he also has up forward three and up forward four. They're both just little jumping kicks, not a launcher. They don't do anything special on counter hit, but they do wall splat. So that's kind of a nice feature. If you're at the wall and you think they might get up with a toe kick or something, boom, you got those. They work pretty well. So any opportunity he has to beat out a low straight up, go for it. Those will work pretty well. Uh, speaking of walls, there's a couple other things that we should look at. We talked about how your options are severely different when it comes to getting out of trouble. That move that's unblockable will splat you into the wall. There's nothing you can do about that if you just stand there. You have to sidewalk to the right. 
But if you side wall to the right, that's going to hit you. So you're really in kind of a pickle at the wall. You really have to make a read. There's just, there's no easy way out of this. One way or another, you're going to take it. So you have to make a good read there. There is another interesting move that does the same block stun effect in back to one. The string by itself is a high high. It's a natural combo. Oh, I didn't want to break the wall. But you can't delay this. You can't hit confirm it at all. It won't come out. What you can do is just hold in the one, which as you notice turns it into a mid. And he gets that same plus 14 block stun as all those other charge up cancel attacks do. And the same deal with the wall. It will splat you if you just stand there. So the cool thing about this is you don't ever want to use it out in the open. Out in the open, forward 2-1 does the exact same thing. That's perfectly fine. If you need a knockdown or whatever, that move is faster, go for it. Save back 2-1 for when you're at the wall. Because when you're playing neutral and you're playing the whole match, you're doing all these pokes and there's these kicks and cancels and spins and feints and all that stuff, your mind is already full of what the timing is like, how many options are there, what can I do here, oh crap, my back is to the wall, I better make good decisions, and then out comes this that you haven't seen all day. That will catch people off guard, I promise you. At least once. After that point, you're probably not going to get away with it again. They're going to see this thing and then pair you or power crush or whatever it might be to get out of there. So that's the longer you can hold on to that, the more effective that is going to be. Because this character is just a tornado of pressure and timing rhythm mistakes. So you haven't seen this for a while and you're not used to it, that's going to catch you. Uh, the last two major moves, and I think his offensive arsenal, are sidestep four which old Bruce players would recognize as back forward for. Pretty much the same thing, a knee lift that launches them high into the air. Uh, except in this case, it is minus 13, which I believe is fair, considering the lack of evasion this character has. If he can sidestep and launch you clean with a mid, I feel like that needs to be punishable for him. That would be too good, right? That would be his answer for everything. If you could just, oh, I'll just do this all day and it'll be safe, that's a bit unfair for a character who's meant to have some defensive liabilities. But it is a natural launcher. Easy combos off of a mid that you can sidestep. So that works really well. Uh, we mentioned Bruce's old back four, but Falcon Rom has a new back four. Looks like this. We talked about this in the punishment section as an 18 frame move, but we didn't really get to talk about how much this move's range just excels. I want to position myself right, uh, right about here. You can see this area where the floor tiles are damaged, right? Under my feet, there's no floor tiles. Watch where my feet land after I do this move. Damn it. Wrong button. There it is. That's not even on the screen anymore. My feet, I'm four feet ahead of where I was starting, plus the length of the four feet of my leg coming at you. This move has a silly amount of range, and it tracks. This is just an excellent weapon in his arsenal. The only drawback is it's a high. Another fun fact. Uh, is it causes a mini version of this block stun. It's only plus six and it doesn't cause them reeling as far. But it's there. This will not wall splat you. It's not severe enough to cause that free wall splat. But it is enough to annoy your opponent. They start, you know, just taking these to the face. They get frustrated. They can't do anything but block and stand up. You start doing things like this and then try to hit them with lows, they're just, they're gonna get frustrated really fast. So if they do make mistakes around you, they get caught big time. So that's a, that's a nice feature of this character is the damage he deals comes in chunks. So any mistake that they make, you capitalize on it very, very well. And this is one of those excellent moves. Catches them walking, catches them at long distance. Again, you feel like they're safe out here? No, you're not, because I'm coming flying at you with launchers. I have amazing range and my range is probably better than yours. So a move like that works really, really well for everything else put together. So that covers his basic mechanic, which is the faint kicks into mix-up options and all the launchers and counter hit launchers therein. We talked about his ability to keep those things honest where you just let the 3-4 string go or you do 3-1 instead. There are options to keep the opponent from having one reliable exit strategy. If they start pressing buttons, then you start letting the string go. If they start sidewalking, then you switch to this, etc., etc. So we covered most of those. We talked about some really good, safe mids this character has. His wall bounce is excellent. He has this orbital punch that's safe. He has this back forward four that just works miracles. All he's missing is lows. 
You need low attacks to keep the opponent from just standing all day. A lot of these things you can you can weather the storm because most of the mix-ups out of the feints and cancel they're mids and highs. Outside of the unblockable situation, if you just hold your ground, you'll be okay. You need lows to be able to, to frustrate your opponent. The only low that we really talked about is down three four three because it has the mix-ups built into it. But down three starting off as a low is interesting enough. You'll know that down three four is not a natural combo like it would be for Josie and Horong, I think. So you can choose to go up into your strings if you wanted to, or you could just use down three by itself. It's fast. 16 frames is fairly, is relatively fast. He does not have anything faster in a low. Oh, he does have that. Down four, this kind of sucks as a low. We talked about it as your counter hit stopper for your pressure. The down four version by itself, kind of bad. Minus five on hit is terrible. They get hit by this thing, they're gonna come right at you. Because a smart player knows the frame advantage is there. Not to mention this is minus 16 on block. You're gonna get launched if they block it, and it's their turn if it gets hit. So this is not a low that you wanna use to open up offense or keep them honest, but it does exist and it's fast. Uh, down three is only slightly better, not by a lot, because down three is meant to be part of this string. So you could use this low to open up string options, go low again, etc., etc. But your main poking lows come in the form of down forward three. So you can see he's a little bit slower at 20 frames. And this is still minus one on hit. Minus on hit is not a good thing. But the way the opponent reels from this, they're going to feel like they're stunned. Until they know better, they're going to feel like they just took a big low because it makes that crack sound and they shouldn't retaliate even though they can. The one you really got to look out for is down back four. This one is only one frame slower. 21 frame startup isn't super fast, but in the realm you're dealing with, this is what you got. But this guy is plus five on hit and causes full crouch. This is the low that wreaks havoc. People get hit with this, they're paralyzed, they're stuck for a minute, and you can set them up for whatever it is that you want. Its only drawback is not hitting grounded, but all these other options, they'll hit grounded for you. So if they just stay on the ground, this might whiff. If you wanted to keep your Oki going by just hitting them low, this isn't the best choice. Other than that, this is the best choice. This is the strongest low that he has for its frame advantage. The only other low we want to talk about is from a full crouch state. He can do this Hell Sweep instead of the cancel. The one that's available out of down forward one cancels, he can do that out of full crouch. The only problem with that is he doesn't have a lot of ways to get to full crouch. There's not a whole arsenal of moves where he can do that, recover and crouching, and then set you up for that. That's pretty much only reserved for duck jabs. His duck jab will leave him crouching, and you could use that if you wanted to, as well as down two. We didn't talk about down two, which is a slightly different version of his duck jab. It's a little bit slower and the frames aren't as good, but this is an elbow. You can't low parry this. And I, I don't know if it activates stances like Lay and Anna versus Lowe's, but it might not. This is technically an elbow, so it is parry proof. That does exist, and that's one of the things that leaves him full crouch so he could use this low. Other than that, there's not a lot of ways to get into it. If Fakarom is crouching, he's up to something. He either wants this Hell Sweep, or once you've eaten Hell Sweeps enough, he'll launch you with a mid. So that low is, is damaging, but it's kind of hard to work that into your routine. Without a million different ways to go for full crouch setups, it's kind of hard to get that pulled off. I think it tends to work better if you can keep your opponent guessing versus your faint cancels more often. Fool it into that to use it there. But that's just me. Honestly, I think this is the best. Forward, forward, four into that cancel is probably the best one. So now that you have lows, especially this guy, which really annoys your opponent, because they're crouched and their frame advantage is terrible. That's all you need to keep them honest. That puts the whole picture together. That's gonna to keep your opponent from making good decisions. So what you do then is once you've taken away your opponent's ability, their strongest weapon against you is sidewalking. Once you've taken that ability away with homing moves and with things that track or whatever, then their next offense against you is to try to counter punch you. They know there's a gap here or they know they can do this and they jab at you. So that means counter hits. If you can trick your opponent into coming at you at the wrong time, you know, we talked about 4-4 four, four as a nice counter hit bait. If they want to try to jab you out of this cancel, 4-4 four, four counter hits them very well. And that's a principle that applies to everything. Sometimes you want to just, instead of going for a mix-up, just do this and just kind of back out of there, you know? Let them come to you. 
As far as counter hits go, he has a magic four at 12 frames, which is more for stopping an opponent's pressure against you rather than setting up the counter hit. But it's there and it works pretty well. Uh, the only issue with it is you can't just do it and then convert a combo, it's a little bit tricky. If you want to maintain your combo, you have to do 4-3, or you have to do something like 4-3-4 four, four, and keep your combo that way. Those will both work, and you know, they have their ups and downs. Uh, it's up to you whichever one you're more comfortable with. If you can see the counter hit coming, like if you know you're going to get it, then maybe you want to go 4-4-3-4 four, 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 because the combo is better, whatever it might be. But nonetheless, it's a magic 4, close range, good for stopping counter attacks against you, worked really well. Pretty good range because of his long ass legs, even though it's a high. So if you are a little bit further away, which as we talked about is also very dangerous for Falcon Rom, he's got a couple other options too. When you're all the way out here, most opponents feel like they're safe, right? And knowing against this guy they're not safe, what do they need to do? They need to get in on you because out here they can't do anything and you can. Right? So they need to get in close, where at least they have a chance to hit you back. So when you maintain distance out here, you're drawing the opponent closer and closer to you. And if they're, you know, having a hard time getting in on you, if you keep them away with, you know, launchers every time they get at you, they try to come in, they try to be sneaky about it. You have a nice counter hit in 3 plus 4 to stop that assault. 18 frames is not the fastest thing there is, but it'll do the job when you're way out here. Maybe up close, I wouldn't want to throw this out as much because it's slower. But it's not that slow. There are faster ones in the game, but this is decent. So an opponent that tries to come at you and think they're sneaky, they catch one of these things. This is a very nice counter hit. Its only drawback is it doesn't track. It's a mid, so they could run at you and sidestep trying to bait you out, and that would work. So the other option he has is back three. This is a homing move that also launches on counter hit. This uh, is a high, which is, you know, a counterpart to having a mid. So he's got both. He's got a mid that doesn't track and a high that does. Both have pretty good range. And these are more of the you're not coming near me situation, right? I'm out here and I want you to come flying at me so I can hit you with one of these. Take note of this damage, by the way. Seventy-eight damage off of an automatic screw attack. Most of those combos are, are less than standard because you lose that extension. Seventy-eight is a huge amount off of that one counter hit. So keep that in mind too. That works pretty well. That's an excellent counter hit tool to have. But those are more keep off me defensive counter hit tools, I believe. Uh, his best offensive counter hit tool, if there is such a thing, I think is forward three two. We talked about this string because it has the mid kick cancel at the end of it, and it also has a three one extension. If you catch the counter hit with this, it pulls them up in the air. I do not think you can confirm this happening. I don't think you can just do 3-2 and then convert. The timing doesn't feel like it's there. So you do get a counter hit launch, but you kind of have to do the whole straight. Forward 3-2-4, and then you can see from that point, plenty of time to convert it into a combo. So that's also pretty interesting too. That move is faster than you'd think. 17 is pretty good. 17, 18 like this, not too bad. But this is a move that you're throwing out in your offense, keep in mind. This is one of the ones you use to start your mix-up situations. So if you do find that situation where you land this as a counter hit, you get a whole combo off of that as well. So that's kind of what I mean by offensive counter hit. This is something that you're throwing out on purpose, and if they pick the wrong time, rather than, you know, forcing them to bait at the very end of the string getting counter hit, this is the beginning of your string that gets the counter hit. So it's a nice little nice little part of the package where his counter hits are dangerous everywhere. There's no avoiding them. Well, obviously there's avoiding them, but you're going to be in a constant struggle to make the right decision against everything that this guy does. So what that leaves then, we, since we talked about the up-close pressure strings, the range of his knees, how to keep yourself honest, these choppy little lows, and when you're out at mid-range, this character is still really dangerous. He's so dangerous that they need to come close to him just to take away how good he is at range. We talked about his mid-range tools, the counter hits to shut that down. So let's talk about whiff punishing. If you're out here and they come flying at you and you can make them whiff by getting further away, you have some really good whiff punish tools. First and chiefly among them is forward forward one plus two. At 18 frames, this is actually pretty fast. If you can input it quickly, that move is fast as hell. It's really hard to see coming. Not to mention the fact that it works from like four and beyond. This move has stupendous range. 
Just fantastic range. Not to mention you can get more if you do it slower by doing... Taking the whole forward forward step with it, you know? You can stretch that out a little bit. At its fastest, 18, you can get more range with the dash if you wanted to. That's an amazing whiff punish tool. That's as fast as... Kazumi's Tiger Uppercut or Asuka's Tooth Fairy, right? If they whiff something in your half of the screen, goodbye. If she crosses that center line and stops attacking, or even if she doesn't, even if there's a gap when she's in my half of the screen, goodbye. This is going to pummel you. Not to mention it's a high launcher. You get a different series of combos from it. Huge amount of damage. Forward Forward 1 plus 2 is your premier whiff punish. Uh, it's worth talking about Forward Forward 2-1, as we mentioned earlier. It's kind of just an inferior version. It's not a launcher. You just get the knockdown. It doesn't have as good a range, and they're both minus 14. So when it comes to this long-range game, the launcher is what you want. Forward Forward 2-1 has almost no value, to be honest. It doesn't... It, it's fine. It's not a bad move, but the launcher is just superior in almost every way. Range, productivity, etc. Uh, so for far with punishing, that works pretty well. Even close, right? It's fast enough that if you whiff something right here, you can still catch them with that. But if you're this close, more often than not, forward 2-3 would work just fine to whiff punish there and get your basic combo that way. Anywhere in between, you need to whiff punish. Down forward 4-3 is your answer. And we talked about that earlier. It has just slightly better range and is easily hit confirmable. So when it comes to whiff punishing, you have a launcher when they're relatively close. Middle ranges, you have this guy if you're not quite sure about the launch. Or anything in between, you have forward, forward, one, plus two. That is just amazing how fast he covers that ground. He looks like a cartoon coming at you. That's ridiculous. So the final two pieces of the puzzle are Falcon Mom's parries. So he has a kick parry in the form of back, three, plus four. This will grab the kick and it retaliates automatically. Uh, let me show Josie doing just that. There you go. Grabs the kick and retaliates. So you have no control over it. It just, that's it. That's the follow up you get. The punch parry, however, is a little bit different. This is down three plus four, and Bruce used to have this move. It doesn't counter hit or anything, and it still doesn't counter hit now. Notice that on counter hit, it does nothing. They just kind of fall down. However, if it parries a punch, it Sabaki parries that punch, and you get a full combo off of that. Only during parry. That doesn't work any other time. That do you don't get a counter hit, you don't get a natural launch. Only during the punch parry does that work. So kind of an interesting twist. There's not a ton of those in the game. So if you have that good of a read on your opponent that you can catch those parries, that'll work really well to intimidate them from trying to counter poke you. So just to round everything out, I want to go over the list of moves with special properties that you can see in the move list. Everything that's marked with a screw attack or homing or whatever it is, I want to just kind of cover those. In general, a lot of screw attacks are also homing moves because they have that horizontal motion built into them. In Falcon Mom's case, they are almost identical. Uh, your homing moves consist of back three, down forward one, four, and forward, forward, one, four, as we saw, those are the exact same move. And right knee cancel, four. He does the three, four string, or anything that ends in that knee. Three, four, four. Forward, three, two, four, four. Or while standing, two, four, four. Those are all homing moves. And those ones come out of the cancel are natural launchers. They will launch you on normal hit. The rest of them are just basic homing moves. Back three will launch you on counter hit cause an automatic screw attack. So, back three, both versions of the right spin kick and the right knee cancel. Those are all your homing moves. Furthermore, those are all also screw attacks in addition to left kick cancel one. That is a screw attack. Anything that ends in the four three string, you cancel the one. That's a screw attack, but it is not a homing move. You can sidestep that to the right very, very easily. So there are no homing moves that are not screw attacks, and there's only one screw attack that is not a homing move. Otherwise, the list is identical. Which I think is kind of convenient because you get uh, a pattern in your mind of what moves there are. Most of these are things you're going to be using in combos a lot. You're going to use back three. You're going to use three, four, four. These are all going to be, especially down forward one, four. That's like your panic screw attack, you know? You're going to be used to all of these in your mind. Okay, these are my screw attacks. Here's what I do with them and all of that. 
So when it comes to homing, you do the same thing you're used to doing in combos. When it comes to stopping your opponent from stepping, those same things come to mind. Oh, three, four, four, that stops them from stepping. Back three. So that's kind of like a nice connection in your mind. Simplifies things a little bit. All the stuff you're using for, for combo screw attacks is the same like go-to list in your brain for homing stuff, for the most part. The only exception being this elbow, not homing. Uh, as far as other properties go, he's got one power crush and one power crush alone, which I think is also fair because if he had a super good power crush, that would tip the scales too far in him having defense. He's too strong of an offensive character to have too many defensive options. The fact that he has a sidestep launcher and parries is more than enough. But since he has to have a, ho a power crush move, they gave him one. It's just nothing Bars. remarkable. It is forward three Bars. plus four. It's on the slow side. Bars. Does knock them down. Bars. Does wall splat. But since Bars. it's a mid, it is minus 12 on block. All of them are. Well, pretty much all of them are unsafe. So he's got a power crush just to have one because everybody needs it. So, I mean, keep that in your list, too, of, you know, he gets in trouble defensively, you don't make a read on the parry, you have a power crush, just like everybody else does. That's the get-out-of-jail-free card. His is just a weak one, because it needs to be a weak one. He doesn't deserve anything stronger than that. It would be too good. Uh, next up is the wall bounce. We talk about this move, forward one plus two, one of his absolute standout moves. I think this move is just excellent, because it's a safe mid, and you get all that damage from it, and it covers a ton of ground. Really good move overall. So he gets a good wall bounce. But that's it. He's only got one. He doesn't have several different options. That's good enough. I think that does the trick pretty well. And so that brings us to the last bit of icing on the cake, which is his rage drive. We talked about this earlier in the very, very beginning and mentioned that we would come back to it. And man, are we going to come back to it. First up, he has a conventional rage drive in the form of up forward three plus four take a look at it again up forward three plus four simple rage drive basically the same one josie has right it's a double oh i didn't know it do that on natural hit um a double knee lift and a spike into the ground this does not start a combo it does not extend combos it just does a ton of damage in wall combos you just get a grip like that especially considering this character's wall ferocity to do things like that is, is so dangerous. It's a great extender for damage at the wall. That's pretty much all it is. It's a damage extender. It just gives this truck some more things to hurt you with. But the real crown jewel here is the other rage drive. They don't do a good job of explaining this whatsoever. What they're showing you here is the 3-4 string and the 4-3 string both can cancel into this. And we talked about it earlier. Anything that has the 4-3 or 3-4 that ends in the knee. All of these cancel into the Rage Drive. Instead of just doing 4-3-4 four, four for this, you do 4-3-3-4. Three, three four. And you get a low launching Rage Drive. Same thing with the other way. 3-4-3-4. Three, four, three four. This is just elevates the danger factor by a thousand. At the wall, we already talked about how much more dangerous he gets because you lose your ability to sidewalk out of a lot of things. You get the fear of getting unblockable into a wall splat. The rage drive gives him that danger out in the open because this takes away your ability to sidewalk this and this because they don't track to your right. Both of those options out of four three strings, they lose hard to sidewalking to your right. Well, not now that he has this, you're going to get launched for that. And you're going to wish you hadn't. So that's what really, like, puts it over the top. The sooner this character gets rage, the sooner you should start sweating when you're fighting against him. That really does a lot. Not to mention how many ways he can access this. The one, two, four, three, two, four, three, all the ways he talked about varying this timing, as well as three, four, forward three, two, four, and while standing, two, four. All of these have access to that rage drive. There's a thousand different ways for this guy to come at you on top of the things you're already thinking about. This cancel and the other. Is he going to switch to the low? Is he going to do this? At any point in time, you could get hit by this low launcher. That is just so dangerous, it's indescribable. It's a lot like Ling Xiao Yu's, except he has six different ways to do it. And I think it's going to come as a bigger surprise. When Ling goes back turn, you're like, all right, she's probably going to do the low or she's not. That's it. It's simple. This guy, it could be any number of things. The longer he holds on to it, if he gets rage and doesn't do it, the whole time you're thinking, when's he going to do it? When's he going to do it? When's he going to do it? This is going to frustrate you even more when he doesn't do it. 
He could have had three opportunities to cancel this raid drive and he didn't do it. You're just gonna be like, why would he do it? And then when he finally does, you're not gonna be ready. So this rage drive really just multiplies everything. He glows red, he flashes with lightning, because this does turn him into a goddamn Super Saiyan. This is just an absurd level of danger from this guy that he has something like that now. Just good lord, look out. And so the final thing to talk about is a bit of an anticlimax, which would be his rage art. Rage arts are generally nothing special. Here's a down forward three plus four. It's got some cool Muay Thai stuff in it. It's got good range, but it's just like the rest. You know, there's nothing remarkable about it. The best trait is also like Josie. They wake up face down, head first, right in front of you. You stop that. So he does get pretty good Okia. You can do the rage drive and probably catch them with a load for free a lot of times. Especially with this guy. Once they roll backwards away from you, you can hit them. So that's a slightly nice feature of it. Other than that, it's pretty much the same thing. So I think that's it. That pretty much covers everything I know about this character so far. Mechanically, on paper, that's it. There's going to be plenty of things to find later on. You know, oh, this particular move doesn't work against this, or you could jab him here, or some characters can actually step this, blah, blah, blah. Stuff like that you'll find out through experience. But for now, I think this is a pretty good cut and dry approach to learning the character. The system of feints and cancels are really dangerous, and they, ha they all seem to have a really easy way to get out of them, which is sidewalk or jab him. And so he instantly comes up with a set of ways to counter that. You know, he has options to beat jabs. He has options to beat sidewalks. So right away, you think you've got him figured out and he just switches to a different game plan. So, okay, well, let me just stay away from him, right? If he can't do the mix-ups, I'm, I'm fine. I'll be out here and I'm safe. Wrong. He's just a dangerous disease ranges too. There's no escaping the danger this man presents. He's got strong counter hits to keep you away. He's got offensive counter hits when you just get buried by the pressure. And he's got parries. Parries are really nice too. That works super, super well. And he's got an amazing whiff punisher for super long ranges, dangerous at mid ranges, ultra dangerous at close ranges. The only real drawback is he doesn't have good evasion. And I think on paper that's accounted for. His punishment game and his parries make up for his inability to go through, under, or around stuff a lot of other characters do. And that's what makes strong characters strong, is having stuff like that. He does not, but I think he'll find a way to work out around it. So, in summary, this character is a bulldozer of pain coming at you. If you make some good reads, you'll be okay. Which I think is true of any matchup in the game, right? If you can anticipate what they're doing and make the right choice, it'll be fine. This guy's just going to put you in that blender a hundred times per match. You're constantly going to have to make a right choice. And I said this earlier on Twitter, this guy just exemplifies the idea of, I wouldn't want to fight that dude. If you saw this guy on the street with his scars and tattoos and glowing and eight foot four, I wouldn't fight that dude. And when it comes to Tekken, I think it's the same thing. You don't want to fight this dude. If you're choosing to fight this dude, that's that's on you and you're in it now. So it's really scary and it's really intimidating. Keep your cool, learn the lessons that we talked about here and see how the, the sausage is made, so to speak. You see what the Falcon Run player is thinking about and suddenly you'll get a little bit better insight. So I hope that's what we accomplished here. I hope you learned a little bit more about playing the character, which should then in turn help you learn how to fight this character. And in a month or so, we'll all be Falcon Rom champions. So thank you again for tuning in. Uh, check the social media, all the follows, subscribe to the YouTube, turn on notifications, all that stuff, because I'm gonna start going over some older characters, updating videos, stuff like that. Try to make some, some more basic overviews of more stuff than I have in the past. So check all those out. And as always, thank you for tuning in. I really appreciate it. And we'll see you all next time. Later.